what's going on today we're going to talk about sniffing and man in the middle and we're going to demonstrate the difference between both additionally we're going to talk about the different techniques and tools used in both sniffing and man in the middle attack before we step into a practical scenario so the very first let's define let's define first the sniffing often sniffing is misunderstood for man in the middle while in fact sniffing is very different so in sniffing what do we do here let's take an example so say we have a switch over here okay and the name of the switch is s1 okay we have a device say pc1 connected to the switch over ethernet 1 we have another device called pc2 connected over ethernet 2 and lastly we have a third device let's say pc3 and in there it's connected through ethernet 3 all right so in sniffing what happens is that i sniff the traffic on specific port okay now when i decide to sniff traffic what i mean by sniffing i mean i want to monitor the network traffic so it asks me what kind what is the interface on which you will be monitoring the network traffic so i define ethernet one as the target interface hence all the traffic coming off pc1 to switch one and traffic coming from s1 to pc1 will be monitored through sniffing so let's say like that all inbound and outbound traffic to and from pc1 the traffic here will be monitored by the sniffer okay now sniffing is used for network troubleshooting to have a visibility of what's happening on the network it's also used for network investigation and security monitoring now in general that is the definition of sniffing one of the most prominent tools for sniffing is wireshark Wireshark can be used for sniffing. So what happens is that Wireshark can work on a, ver a specific interface like Ethernet 1 and sniff traffic coming from and into that interface, say Ethernet 1. Another tool is called TCP dump. TCP dump is the command line bro of Wireshark. Also we have dsniff. Although dsniff is used most of the time uh, in different contexts or scenarios but these are the tools of sniffing and that's the definition of sniffing now in the case of MITM the story is completely different so let's go over now MITM or man in the middle attack so in MITM what happens let's take an example so we have um, say victim I'm not gonna call it victim let me call it um, PC1 let's take an example of PC1 all right and here we have say a router could be switch could be router and at the end we have the cloud okay so what happens here say PC1 is requesting to access Facebook or Twitter so the request goes like that from your pc you want to access facebook right the request goes to the router the router looks in the routing table if it finds a match it will give you the answer if it doesn't find which is most probably it will ask the dns server after the answer comes as you can see the request goes to the cloud and then asking for facebook and then the response will come back from the cloud meaning from Facebook to the router and from the router to PC1 that's what happens in a healthy network now man in the middle attack is we have another person say PC I'm not gonna call it PC let me call it evil PC so evil PC okay is connected also to the router so the common factor between evil PC and PC, they are both connected to the router. So if you're talking about Wi-Fi, they will be both 
connected to the same Wi-Fi. If you're talking about a switch network, they will both connect it to the same switch or the same port sometimes. So PC, even PC1, with some tools, they will be able to intercept all the requests between PC1 and the cloud and vice versa. So that's why we call it man in the middle attack. They will have visibility over what's happening on the entire network. And MITM is the term used to describe malicious network attacks. Sniffing is kinda different. Although we can turn sniffing into evil purposes, but it stays different from MITM. And let's talk about something called the evil sniffing. This is not a scientific term or an official term, just to simply demonstrate things. Okay, so what when when sniffing turns into evil sniffing so under sniffing we can implement a technique called mac address floating if this is a new term we're gonna talk about mac address floating now so in mac address floating before talking about mac address floating let's talk, first talk about how switch works so let's say let's go back to the example here so switch s1 Okay, maintains a table in the memory. The table contains the MAC addresses. Okay. And the corresponding network ports. So we can say that switches maintain a MAC table that maps individual MAC addresses on the network to the physical ports on the switch. For example, S1 will contain a record in the MAC address table uh, in the MAC table for PC3. The first record will be the MAC address of PC3 and the physical port here. Say it is, um, you can call it port 3. So switch S1 now knows that on port P3, PC3 is connected with the with its own MAC address. That's the table here maintained by switch to facilitate the communication and to prevent the switch from forwarding the traffic to all of the ports when a request is received. So this allows the switch to direct data out of the physical port where the recipient is located as opposed to um, indifferently or indiscriminately broadcasting the data out of all ports such uh, such as uh, or the way ethernet hubs works okay so that's how mac address tables work if you go back now to the mac floating mac floating or media access control floating it is an attack employed to compromise what the functioning of the switches normally the objective is to, to, to make the switch, S1 turns into a mode called fail open. So we have what is called as fail open. It is a mode switches resort to when it encounters failure. Okay, so here let's say failure. Specifically, it is memory failure. So what happens, the tag or MAC address floating allows or works by forcing legitimate MAC address table contents out of the switch and it will make it work like a hub so the hub will forward everything to all ports that's how in sniffing we'll be able to have visibility over the entire network much as MITM or man in the middle attack so when we are successful with MAC address floating as we demonstrated the switch here will resort to fail open mode and temporarily operate similarly to a network hub forwarding all of the received frames i'm gonna call it to every connected port ethernet 2 3 2 and 1 aside from the port the traffic originated from this would allow the attacker to, or penetration tester in the in our case to sniff the network traffic between other hosts PC2 and PC3, PC2 and PC1, PC1 and PC3. 
This traffic normally wouldn't be received by the device if the switch were functioning properly and this is because of a memory problem caused by the MAC address floating. So MAC address floating is a concept that will flood the switch with frames so that the switch will go out of memory and operate on fail open mode. Operating on fail open mode again will make the switch forwards the packets to all on all ports. So, for example, if PC1 asked to forward a frame to PC2, now switch on when the system will receive the request, it will forward the response to PC2, PC1, and PC3. Normally, it should only forward the response to PC1. But because it's out of memory as a result of MAC address floating, it will forward on all ports. That's the concept of MAC address floating, and that's how we turn sniffing into evil sniffing, meaning that it is... MAC address floating. Now let's talk about techniques of MITM. So when we talk about MITM, let's change the color. The first MITM technique is ARP spoofing. Now ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. And it's, as you know, network communication protocol to facilitate or resolve internet layer addresses into link layer addresses, as you have learned in the CCNA or in the basic networking. Now, ARP spoofing is a technique employed to achieve fully fledged MITM or man in the middle attack. Now, basically, if you go back, you may ask me, why don't we use uh, MAC address floating in a sniffing? Is it safer? Nope, it's not safer because MAC address floating is kind of noisy attack so we can call it noisy attack okay and if you are doing a pen testing most probably the SOC center will be able to catch these attacks immediately so it's not recommended if you are doing that under in the context of pen testing that's why we resort to ARP spoofing as it's uh, quieter, smoother, and also cuter. I don't like uh, evil stuffing or Mac floating. Okay, so let's get back now to ARP spoofing. So what happens in ARP spoofing is that an attacker will send um, spoofed, spoofed. These terms should be memorized if you want to master the subject. So the the, uh, the let's draw a map here. So say we have again PC one. Or shall we get back to the examples before? Okay, let's do that. So getting back to the example here. So PC1 will ask to access Facebook, right? And they will, re they will receive the response in a healthy manner as I demonstrated here. So let's draw kind of frame and say this is normal. What is not normal is that when PC1, okay, asks for Facebook and the request goes to the router and goes to you as well. So the PC1 is asking the router and is telling you, Evil PC, hi, do you know the address of Facebook? And Evil PC, what it will do, it doesn't know. It, you are not, it, evil PC is not a router. So what happens is that the router will ask for Facebook and you as the evil PC will also ask for Facebook. So evil PC will, t will tell PC1 that yes, I can give you the address of Facebook. I have no problem at all. Please keep asking me for addresses on internet websites you want to ask, you want to access. So what happens is that when the answer comes back from the cloud, it comes like that to the router, okay, and to you as well. And then you will forward the response to PC1 and again the response will be forwarded from the router. That's a very brief or very close image of what's happening when you conduct ARP spoofing. So this is all because that attacker sends the spoofed ARP messages onto a local area network. The aim is to associate the attacker's MAC address, the attacker's MAC address here is evil PC, to associate it with the IP address of another host. In this case, it's the router. So PC1 or, and all other devices on the network will believe that you are 
the router, not the actual router. Why? Because we have spoofed the MAC address of the router. Spoofed MAC. Oh, wait. Spoofed ARP request. Now, one of the most popular tools to perform ARP, ARP spoofing is first one. So, tools we have EtherCAP. And recently, they have launched BetterCap. Personally, I love BetterCap, and you can find a corresponding full explanation on the use of BetterCap in my YouTube channel. In the practical scenario, we will talk about EtherCap, however. That's for ARP spoofing. And by now, you have understood the difference between sniffing and MITM and the different tools and techniques used in both scenarios. Next, we're going to take a practical scenario and demonstrate both sniffing and MITM. The practical scenario we're going to take today is part of this room, L2 Mac flooding and ARP spoofing. If you guys want to learn MITM and sniffing, I recommend you guys to take a look at this room and go over the tasks. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to perform MAC flooding, namely sniffing using MAC flooding and man in the middle attack with ARP spoofing. So let's get started. Let's take a look first at TCP dump. So we can start TCP dump using the command sudo TCP dump dash H. And here we have the help menu. Namely, we're going, we're going to be using TCP dump in a verbose mode to be able to print the packets as TCP dump is running. And of course, we can also write the output, uh, the output to a PCAP file as well. So that's if you want to do sniffing. Okay, so let's apply that to a machine, to the virtual machine that we have open here and see if we can catch the traffic between our machine and other machines uninstalled on the virtual environment. So we can start with, say here we can uh, type IP or if config to see the connection parameters. As you can see, LO, look back, we have this IP and on TUN0 we have this IP address and as well we have the local address on interface ENS33. It's very important to note down your IP address before you start any sniffing. On the other hand, if we take a look at the virtual environment and type if config, um, let's uh, use alternative command show address or not IP address so say Ethernet 0 so Ethernet 0 we have this IP connected 1037.1 and here on backbox machine we have this so they're on the same subnet never mind let's take a look at other interfaces Ethernet 1 so Ethernet 1 we have this IP address of the current machine 192.168.12.66 and the network CIDR is slash 24. Okay, so this is the IP address of this machine. Now, if we want to discover hosts running on the network, we can do that using um, nmap, right? So nmap dash sn. Let's take the host portion and then type 0 indicating that we want to scan the network slash 24 don't forget the CIDR and now we will be able to see how many hosts are live on this network so we have 1 12.2 and 12.66 being the current machine okay so why are these information helpful as we will do sniffing we want to see if the traffic between um, 12.2 and 12.1 can be visible 
starting from 12.66 so can we see the traffic between Alice and Bob for example right are we able to see them if we run sniffing on the interface Ethernet 1 off the machine 12.66 normally you wouldn't be able to see the traffic between Alice and Bob if you run sniffing on Eve right because as I have demonstrated earlier that sniffing is used for network troubleshooting right and in order to turn sniffing into an evil sniffing we're gonna have to perform other techniques such as mac floating so let's first stay on the white side right now and perform tcp dump let's now monitor the network on the um, um, ethernet one on the current machine which is 12.66 see what kind of traffic we can capture so we can run tcp dump using the following command tcp dump dash i we specify of dash a first a is the verbose option which enables us to take a look at the captured packets in real time dash i we specify the interface ethernet one okay and then we can write the output to a file or the pcap file for further inspection so what you want to do you cannot inspect it's not practical to inspect the output uh, from the terminal so what you want to do you want to forward the output to an out an outside file an output file say um, tcp dump dot pcap now once you run this you'll be able to create a pcap file that contains all of the packets exit changed and monitored using tcp dump now this will take some time okay that's why i have done that and prepared so that you preserve your time so once you launch this command an output file will be created it's called tcp dump okay we can open this output file using wireshark so we head back to my local machine and we use now wireshark that's also pre-installed on backbox so ls i have now the pcap file created here which is tcp dump.pcap so now wire shark tcb and now it will open wireshark as you can see we have now the packets knowing that our ip address is 12.66 we can see all of the uh, packets exit change between our machine and other hosts as you can see we have 12.2 but we don't see any presence for packets exit changed with 12.1 which happens to be Bob or Alice so that means we can perform sniffing we can sniff for traffic but only for traffic exit changed or passed through our machine okay so sniffing is not the same as man in the middle attack okay now if you take a look at the packets we see we have ICMP requests coming off the machine 12.2 to our machine 12.66 and again our machine 12.66 replies with an icmp echo reply to the machine 12.2 and it goes on the exit change a couple of other icmp packets until the um, packet capture ends so that's for the first scenario where we sniff traffic off our machine now let's take another example where we try to turn sniffing into a way of viewing the traffic not only traffic exit changed between the hosts or our host and other hosts but also between hosts themselves hence we are looking at the traffic from an unauthoritative view right so we, have, we are not authorized to view packets exit changed by other hosts because the packets don't belong to us right but now with mac floating we will be able to do that so let's close this and get back here so what we're going to do now we're going to first run a tool called mac off so basically mac off um, is a tool that you can run to float any switch as we talked about in the uh, as we talked about earlier we can float the switch and we can take the mac table out to be able to view all of the traffic exit change on all ports thus we turn the switch into a fail open mode 
we can do that using the tool mac off so how to run mac off and how to sniff the traffic at the same time we're gonna have to do that using two terminals we can run mac off or run tcp dump in one terminal so tcp dump dash a dash i dash w slash or you can name it here tcp dump mac off pickup now we run this on one terminal and on a separate terminal we're going to run mac off dash i ethernet one now first we run tcp dump and then you run mac off both they need to be running simultaneously both they need to be running simultaneously in order for the bk file to have some content now once you do that leave it for five minutes and then we get back so after we get back because i have done this before ls that's clear ls the pika file has been created now we can also view the pika file using wireshark okay now let's see if we can cap let's see if we have captured the packets between other hosts as well meaning we don't want to view traffic between 12.66 which happens to be the current machine and other hosts we want to see other ip addresses i want to see foreign ip addresses in the packet capture and indeed as you can see i can see packets between ip address i don't recognize as my current machines so let's take this down drag this down as well as you can see i can see many ip addresses that i don't recognize as my own which means we have successfully captured the traffic our or the packets it's a change between other hosts or it's a change on all ports of the switch let's take for example an ip address that belongs to a host on my network that i know ip address equal 192.168.12.1 let's see if you can let's see if you have captured the packets coming off this ip address it happens to be the first host on the network which is alice and indeed as you can see i can see the packets exit chain between 12.1 and 12.2 interesting and all of them are icmp requests and replies okay, let's take now a stop and answer some questions so we go to task five sniffing while mac floating and we see the questions what kind of packets is alice continuously sending to bob okay we head back so alice is 12.1 and bob is 12.2 we see the packets that are continuously being sent are icmp packets so this marks the answer for this question okay what is the size of their data section back highlight any packet say this one scroll all the way down expand this view expand the internet message protocol data byte section indicates it is 1337 this is the answer now if you're curious why don't why didn't we answer the questions for the previous task let's do that task four passive network sniffing scrolling down so these are kind of uh, uh, easy questions you can you can answer these questions by opening the first packet capture so this one was associated with the mac flooding now why it's not closing okay closing this one على طول بس بدي اعمل فيديو تخرب الحكايه هي كلها هذا نعم 
Now if you open tcp.down.pcap, that has been created as part of task 4, with the same methodology we followed to answer questions of task 5, you can answer these questions. Okay then, so let's carry over. Now let's talk about other techniques. So up until now we talked about sniffing and sniffing with Mac floating. Now let's talk about man in the middle attack. How do you achieve man in the middle attack and how to do it? So man in the middle attack can be done using either better cap or ether cap. So for this course we're doing with ether cap. Ether cap dash h and we see the help menu of ether cap. Now what we're going to do here with ether cap in order to sniff traffic or to catch the traffic on the network interface and all other interfaces we're going to use a couple options from here so the main option is this one dash m dash m indicates that we're going to perform dash dash mitm or man in the middle attack perform an m an mitm attack and here we put the arguments so mainly man in the middle attack relies on arp spoofing so the option here will be arp okay and of course we need to define the interface interface can be defined with the option dash i let's see if it is here and of course we're gonna need to use another option which is dash t indicating that we will use text data use text only gui as you can see here other options as well can be used to enhance the experience such as dash w to write the sniff data to a pcap file it's very crucial to write the output to a pcap file so that we can be able to inspect that using wireshark as we demonstrated with or in the case of sniffing okay let's now take an example with ethercap and sniff or uh, repeat the word sniff i don't know why and catch the traffic on all of the network ports be aware that when we use ethercap okay to perform arp spoofing it's an illegal um way of doing things right so make sure you do that only on environment or on hosts that you own don't do that on computers or networks that you are not authorized to perform such actions okay so let's do that so here again editor cap dash t for text data dash i the interface will be ethernet1 dash m the mitm technique will be arp and we will write into a file called ethercab.pcap once we do that it's going to take about five minutes okay to finish to preserve time i have done that previously and i will show you guys the output file and how it looks like when we analyze it with wireshark one thing to note that when you enter okay so what's going to happen here if you want to end the work of either cap don't use Control c just type q so if i press q now as you can see it ended and this is a way to make either cap exits gracefully so what, what it means by saying gracefully, we mean that Ethercap will re-arp the victim. It means that Ethercap will undo the ARP poisoning it has done on other victims. So things will go back to normal after Ethercap finishes running. It's very crucial you do that. Okay, let's analyze the file now, LS. So we have Ethercap, of course, Wireshark. indeed this is the file and let's scroll down as you can see we see all sorts of packets http tcp packets if we can sort um, the type of packets we want using the filter here say http and we see only http traffic as you can see we are able to see all of the exchange http traffics between other hosts 12.10 12.20 and we see requests to a web server to um, a file called test.txt, right? So if you highlight one of these packets, 
here is HTTP request from 12.10 to 12.20 indicating that it is requesting a file called slash.txt let's take a look at this packet expand the hypertext transfer protocol section and we see there is a section called authorization it means that the access to this web server requires basic authentication and we see credentials so here we are able not only to capture the traffic exchanged along with the data but we're only able to see credentials exchanged this applies only to HTTP traffic this doesn't apply to HTTPS this is a separate subject on its own but that's for exchange packets using HTTP if we minimize this we can also take a look at other packets for example expanding this down scrolling up so here we are requests scrolling down we see TCP request as you can see between 1220 and 1210 if we click on these while inspecting TCP traffic we take a look at the portion here right to be able to see what kind of data exchanged so scrolling highlighting one by one we see this one who am I who am I is a command in Linux to display the current user okay now why would the who am I command um, being shown up here it means that there is something fishy going on so basically my my guess is that 12.10 okay is performing some sort of system commands on 12.20 it means there is some, some system compromise and 12.10 is interacting with 12.20 12 with some sort of reversal we can take a look at the full stream by right clicking on the packet and follow tcp stream and indeed as you can see here we see commands executed who am i pwd ls these kind of commands are executed on 12.20 and these commands cannot be executed as you can see we see the responses to every command the output this means that there is some sort of system compromise taking place okay so these are also the rest of the packets all right now that's how we perform man in the middle attack okay on a virtual environment how about we manipulate the packets i mean how about we change the packets exit changed so not only we are able to visit to view the traffic but also we need to be able to manipulate the traffic changing the traffic for example if we take the case of the commands here exit change commands right click view tcp stream so this command was sent from 12.10 to 12.20 right this one as well and the list goes on what if we want to manipulate the commands meaning instead of whom i say we display the contents of one of these files is that possible of course it is possible with ethercap so if we go back to ethercap okay and we will need now to go back to the help menu so ethercap Let's see if we can use something called the editor filter. So with editor filter, we will be able to create a file, specify some rules, and make editor cap uses this file to be able to manipulate the commands. So I guess in newer versions, we need to use the editor filter on its own. So we type editor filter. Okay, so no source file, editor filter dash h. Okay, so what we're going to do here guys is that we're going to create a file okay using editor filter in the file we're going to define the rules that editor cap will follow when uh, conducting man in the middle attack through this file we are able we will be able to manipulate the commands exit change between other hosts effectively we will turn mitm attack into some sort of um I'm not gonna say system compromise but manipulation attack let me call it so we have dash o the output file 
and we have to supply an input file here filter file and also the options okay so let's create now a filter file using editor filter and then compile the file so that the file is usable with editor cap now to understand how it works i'm gonna show you guys a page so browser where you can see all of the rules on how to write editor filter files to be used by editor cap so if you visit the filter here you can see the use cases and the rules here are some examples that can be used as contents of the filter file so we need a filter file to be used here closing this one now let's create a filter file so clear nano say editor cap filter dot ecf and here i'm gonna start writing the content so it, it is similar to c but the syntax can be learned very easily so if i'm gonna type if now specify the criteria to which the manipulation will be applied so the criteria will be ip dot protocol okay equal tcp so i want to only manipulate traffic exchanged on tcp and okay so and another condition tcp dot source now here we define the source port the source port is the port that you believe is being in use by the other hosts so in our example we have we saw that one of the hosts has reversal access on other hosts and the port was four force which is the common port used when we when you create a reversal with metasploit and we're going to search for the data to which the to which the uh, filter will be applied so search two parentheses data data and here we're looking to here we will put the data that we will be uh, manipulating so in our case we're going to change the who am i command we want to change this command right okay and then we open one curly brace don't forget the indentation log data dot data okay here we specify the path to which the log file will be sent so slash root and the name of the file say editor cab dot log semicolon and then indentation another one here we replace or manipulate the data so replace use the replace function and then we type in the source data or the data that we will be manipulating so in this case who am i will be changed right and then we need here here we put whatever you want to execute you can put reversal you can only display contents of specific file right so here you put whatever you want to achieve Say you want to achieve or cat some files. So cat um, any file like test or text, semicolon, and then here we specify a message that if the manipulation is successful, the message will be displayed. So say here um, evil editor cab is here and we finish this what's going to, to happen now is we will compile the ecf into an ef file as i demonstrated in the help menu here so as you can see we're going to need an output file and an input file so we go back editor filter editor cap ecf to editor cap dash filter 
instead of ECF, the output file that will be accepted as an input by better cap, not better cap, better cap is EF. Um, yeah, we have a typo. Let's see here, 14 protocols, tables loaded, 13 constants loaded, and I think we are done. This is the... This is the output file, but it has been... Some, some stuff has been removed of, uh, of the name, as you can see. Okay, so let's modify the name, making sure everything is set correctly. So remove the letter cap and say here... Um, MITM. How about this one? Dash O. MITM.EF. Now we are ready to use this file by Ethercap. The syntax, let's get back to the syntax. Ethercap, always use the help menu. So we want to specify a file to be used by Ethercab as a filter. So we're going to need to use the dash F option for loading the filter file. Okay, going back, Ethercab dash T dash I Ethernet 1 dash M R dash F and MITM dot EF. Let's start. I want to see the contents of the test.txt if it exists. If it doesn't exist, I want to see the output, no such file or directory here. We're going to need to wait for a while until everything is captured. Okay. Then we're going to press Q. Okay, so we ended the work of Ethercab. Let's scroll up. Uh -huh. As you can see, no such file or directory. It means we, we, we tried to cut the contents of a file called test.txt, but there is no such file or directory. N never mind, it doesn't need to exist, right? What matters is that we, are we were able to execute our command through Ethercab and a simple MITM attack. That's it. To answer the questions of the task, what we're going to do here, guys, is to change the file that we want to display the content with. So, getting back to nano ethercap filter, and here we're going to change this from test into root. lsrm. Let's remove all of the EF files. Filter. RMMITM and then we recreate the compiled file using ether filter one more time. This is it. And now start or run ether cap. Now, what I want to see, I want to see the contents of the root flag or root file, which happens to be the flag. I caught it. This is it. As you can see, this is the contents of the flag. It means the command has been executed. Okay, now it's time to answer some questions of the room. So task eight this is the recent task we have accomplished and it is the flag. Okay, now let's answer task seven being the longest task. This requires you to open the Wireshark file. So going back to Wireshark clear ls wire shark editor cap all right scan the network on ethernet one who's there enter their ip addresses in ascending order just perform nmap scan on the box you will see this 
let's do that for you guys so in map or show um, IP address show Ethernet one and then in map dash s n so we have we're gonna be able to see the hosts so 10 and 20 and then perform a regular in map scan to reveal the open ports to be able to answer the next question so we have port 80 open on 12.20 answer these questions can you access the content behind the service from your current position no why curl it should be and you receive no authorized header which, which means we need to be authorized or authenticated to be able to view the contents of the uh, web server or the page nine can you see any meaningful traffic to or from that port passively sniffing on your interface nope now launch the same r spoofing attack as in the previous task can you see some interesting traffic yes we are seeing interesting traffic arp we see tcp and we see HTTP as well. Who is using that service? It means who is requesting to access port 80. Let's go up. To be able to answer this question, guys, we're going to filter the traffic by protocol, HTTP, and see who's requesting access to the web server. The first packet comes from 12.10 to 12.20. So it happens to be Alice, I guess. Alice, who is what is the host name the requests are sent to? To be able to answer the question, we're going to need to expand the details of the request, expanding hypertext transfer protocol, going to uh, the host section. You'll be able to see the host name of the server that is being requested. What's which file is being requested? It is tech test, as you can see here. And to view its contents, we're going to need to right click, follow TCP stream, and here we see the re request, the response, and this is the plain text response contained in test no, text. Okay. Which credentials are being used for authentication? We answered the question this one when we were explaining our spoofing. Now stop the attack. What's it recap doing in order to leave its man in the middle attack position gracefully? Also, we talked about this when we ascertained the importance of using Q to end the functioning of end, uh, end recap. Can you access the content behind that service now using the op obtained credentials? Let's try that. So we're going to attempt to access the content using curl, but we're going to provide the username and password we have captured. So that's you with curl. And here we paste in the credentials that can be acquired from expanding the authorization section. Right click and copy the value here. Back, 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 back. As you can see, the response now is different because we provided the required username and password. And we see the response from the server and the files there test and user.txt. Yes. What is the user flag? Okay, let's request the user file. So slash user.txt to be able to see the flag. You should also have seen some rather questionable kind of traffic. What kind of remote access does Alice have on the server? We also explained this. It was a virtual and we have shown the commands as well. Which of the listed files do you want? Root, of course. And in the manipulation, we explained how to get the flag. And that was it, guys. I hope you liked that. And I will definitely see you in the next video.